Hello and welcome to In The Game, Qatar's first sport podcast. Today we have a very special event. We're taking part in the virtual global women's golf day. And we've got two very special guests. We've got Katrina. Katrina was the captain of the Solheim Cup for the European team. And we've got Michael from the Education Golf Club. It's an honor to have you both on the show today. And may I start with you, Katrina? Can you tell us a little bit about your story? Yeah, great to be on the show today. Uh, yeah, um, obviously I grew up here in Scotland where I'm still living. Um, you know, played professional golf 25 years uh, around the world, mostly on the LPGA Tour in the, in the US. Um, as you said, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to be the winning captain of the Solheim Cup last year in 2019, which is the biennial event between Europe against the USA, basically the ladies' version of the Ryder Cup. So, um, you know, obviously to be captain in my home country was a huge honour. Uh, so, yeah, I've been very lucky, very fortunate, uh, you know, to play a game I love uh, for my living. And the team won in Scotland. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a nail-biting finish. Went down to the last match, last green, last putt. So, uh yeah, it could, it couldn't have been any more exciting. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, a, a huge thrill being captain. Uh, it's only an hour and a half from where I live. Uh, so, yeah, it was, uh, the crowds were, I've never seen crowds like it on that Sunday, actually. So it was, uh, you know, certainly a day I'll never forget. I, I can imagine, because I, this morning, I, yesterday, I was going through all the videos, and I think that's what put me in a very nervous position, being honoured to have, be interviewing you today. <laughs> <laughs> we've had many guests, honestly, we've been going for about a year now, and um, we've had many guests on the show, but it was, it was something different, especially when I saw all the videos with you walking down with all the team and, and it, all the cheering, and then I noticed it was 14 and a half to 13 and a half. Oh, my word. I could only, I, I was trying to put myself in your position, and, and honestly, it, was, it must have been overwhelming. Yeah, it was probably, you know, after the probably winning the uh, the Women's British Open in 2009, which is one of our majors, um, it was probably really the, the highlight of my whole career. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough, I've um, played in nine Solheim Cups and, uh, you know, three winning teams, uh, won the winning point even one year in 2003 in Sweden. But uh, that I think just the honour there of being captain, being in Scotland, uh, you know, I think when you're captaining, you know, your fellow peers, uh, your friends your players you know uh you know it's just a, a huge honor and uh, even though i didn't hit a shot that week um it was certainly pretty nerve-wracking and uh one of my one of the one of those moments that's just going to stay with me forever i i can imagine and I, I read it in in one of the articles that i read um that you said it was the pinnacle even though you won the open um it was your pinnacle yeah, I mean, I think um, obviously golf being, it's very difficult, golf being so individual, uh, obviously individual success, uh, the British Open was obviously the highlight, but um, there's something very special about team golf. You know, you're, you've got uh, your peers, 12 other players there with you. Uh, I think that's what makes it so special. Uh, you know, you've got the players, the caddies, the vice captains, the helpers. There's a huge group of you that are all, uh, you know, got a common goal to go out there and win that week. So, um, you know, it certainly calls for a huge celebration when, when you win. <laughs> I can only imagine. Um, so, Michael, you're the, um, you're the uh, manager, general manager of the Education City Golf Club. Um, fantastic place, may I say. One of, it must be one of the leading lights when it comes to um, for academies. It's a wonderful place. Tell us more. What, what's your story? How did you get there? Um, how I got here, I've had a long uh, career in golf. Um, unlike uh, Katrina, um, I didn't have much success as a player, so I, I quickly uh, learned that if I wanted to work in this industry, I'd have to find another way of earning a living. So um, I focused on teaching golf, first of all, and um, funnily enough, was a teaching professional at Glen Eagles, where uh, Katrina won the Solheim Cup, not at the same time, of course, but I was there, and um, that's where my career really started. Um, I, was, I loved teaching, and I really thought that that's where my career was going. Interestingly enough, Glen Eagles had a development a division and were getting asked to do projects dotted around the world. And I got sent to South Africa to set up a golf academy at the wonderful Fancourt Resort. And whilst there, my boss said, um, what are your career aspirations? And I said, I want to go and teach. And he said, no, I think you could be a pretty good general manager, unbeknown to me that he had a plan to send me to Bahrain, of all places, to open up a club that Glen Eagles uh, were aligned with here. So I did that for 11 years, um, 
headed back to the UK uh, to get my kids through secondary education, did a, a few more things in golf consultancy, got involved with the Club Managers Association of Europe running their education programs, which was programs to help managers become better at their jobs. Um, uh, running clubs, healthier clubs means um, healthier business and such like. And I think it was through that that the combination of educational background and also experience of running a club in the region um, they called me up uh, from Qatar and said, would, would you be interested in running the club here in Qatar? And uh, when I came from an interview and saw the facilities, and saw uh, how much Qatar had, had grown. Uh, the first time I'd been here was 1999 when I was up in Bahrain and the country's just transformed incredibly. And all the exciting infrastructure projects and such like um, got me over here. And, um, and we got the golf course open on the 1st of January uh, 2019. 2000, yeah, 2019, um, and we're fortunate enough to hold the Commercial Bank Qatar Masters just last March, and then it's all gone downhill from there, unfortunately. It, what you've achieved there, Michael, is, is just incredible. When it comes to the, the, you, in your virtually the, your first year of opening, you had the Master, the Qatar Masters golf. Club. And I know that we've only got another golf club that was doing it beforehand. But to be able to them to give you the the the, the competition to run was a, a magnificent achievement, right? Yeah, it was a fantastic opportunity, um, and we coincided it with our official grand opening with Her Highness Sheikh Hamosa coming uh, down, and we invited Katrina over for the official opening as well because it was all all about the guys really, and um, with the tournament going on. But we want to make sure that ladies' golf is given due recognition, and the centerpiece, as you pointed out. Um, is our teaching facilities here. And we've invested heavily in that. Um, our mission is to grow the game of golf here. We've put um, big emphasis on ladies golf tuition here. Uh, and it was just right that we had Katrina here with her highness uh, to give the, the ladies game a bit of profile as well. And we had great plans um, immediately after to um, catapult that going forward, get um, more and more uh, young Qatari ladies in particular coming along, trying golf for the first time and expanding the game. And we're just um, waiting now patiently to get reopened again so we can continue our uh, expansion plans and get more people playing golf. And, and now I'm going to put you under a bit of um, pressure, Michael. Um, Katrina, what, do you th what did you think about Qatar? What did you think about the golf course and the, the academy? Yeah, I must say I love Qatar. It was quite funny because in the October, we'd actually been down there on holiday with our kids for a week. Um, really doing not a lot, just sitting at a beach and uh, doing a few odd things. But uh, it was nice to go back down there in March and the facility there is really unbelievable. I don't think I've ever seen one quite quite as good as that, actually, with all the, the track mans, the indoor putting. And then, like Michael said, they've got a, a very nice kind of bit that they can se separate off for the ladies. So, um, you know, it really is a, a fantastic facility. I must say I was very impressed by it. Be a great place I to go and practice when it's open. <laughs> I, I must admit, I, I kind of, um, I've seen golf clubs, I, I've been lucky enough that I've seen a few golf clubs, and credit to you, Michael, without a shadow of doubt, credit to you. What you've created there is unbelievable, because I, I've been there when I came to have a meeting with you at one stage, and when I, you were in a porter cabin, and when I saw the place, I'm thinking, did he realise what he was coming to? When, and it was, there was nothing, there was virtually nothing there then, so it was going back quite a few years ago. But to see that what standard you've got that, the level of service, the way that everybody enjoys, loves their job and everything works like clockwork, it's incredible and a credit to you. Uh, thank you. It's really, it, it's down to great teamwork. I mean, the vision of the project was nothing to do with me. I, um, some, some people dream, dream, dreamed that up to, to build what we, we got. Um, Jose Maria Lathabal, the course uh, designer, has done a wonderful job, um, in particular with the landscaping and such like. But I remember asking um, him how he came about getting the gig to design the, the golf courses, because he's not really up there as one of the top names in golf course um, design. Um, but they, they, they were really clever in their approach and, and their pitch document, where they focused solely on education. And you can see the, the, the whole journey here, the, the golf club, it centers around that practice facility, the, the innovative driving range, the center of excellence with all the tech in there, the amazing short game facilities. And then you can imagine as a beginner golfer, you're having a lesson, then you can go into a really great driving range. You were talking earlier to me about the, uh, the power tee where the balls pop up to make practice really easy. Amazing short game facilities. 
then onto a par three course, then onto a six hole course, and then you can tackle the championship golf course. Not many golfers in the world would ever get that learning journey. And so full credit to Jose Maria Lathaba and his team for coming up with that vision right at the, the beginning. And um, like I said, and I said this at the opening, um, these are then just products, but products need people to make them come to life. And I've got an amazing team here. Uh, the, the guys on the golf course maintaining the course do a fantastic job. Uh, sometimes in very trying and difficult conditions, growing grass in, in the heat. And then the frontline staff are lovely. They really, want, they really genuinely want you to have a great day here. They're lovely, they're friendly, they'll take care of all your needs. So um, that's a big, uh, big help for me uh, to have such a strong team around me. It's a massive, that's, from my side, that's the way that I look at it. It's, it's, I'm going for a game of golf. I want to enjoy the experience. I want to be able to go to somewhere that, that I, I don't ever think out of my mind. But there's the little touches. You've got fantastic facilities there, brilliant golf, golf courses. But it's all those little things that you go away with and you think to yourself, my word, that was special. I, 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 that was just unbelievable. You've, a credit to you and your team, honestly. One of the questions that it brings me on, and you, would, you touched on the ladies' golf side of things. Um, Katrina, what, what is it from, in, in all your, in the years that you've been involved in golf, what are the changes that you've seen to this stage today? I think the biggest change I've seen, especially in ladies golf, is just um, how much more global the game is. Um, I think um, getting golf included in the Olympics again has really helped. Um, you can just see when I first went on the LPGA Tour, there was maybe five or six countries represented, uh, the vast majority being American, a few Europeans and perhaps a Japanese. And now I think there's 29 different nationalities. Um, so I think the biggest difference I've seen is just the, the expansion of golf into countries, um, probably especially in kind of, I suppose, the Middle East and Asia, where perhaps golf wasn't as uh, popular. Um, it's just the increase in, in golf in those countries. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it, I, I remember I was, I was involved in a golf club. I got into the golf club in, industry back in 91. And um, it was, it was, it was life changing for me. It was, it was fantastic. And, and, and it, we started off with just the driving range and then we built a nine hole par three and then we stepped it up to the 18. But ladies golf has come on so much. I, I remember we, we were always joking with them at the beginning to say that, oh yeah, you play off different tees. But in fact, I'm going to say something con controversial now. A lot of the ladies have got better swing than men's and their short game are better than men's, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I really don't. I, that's always a kind of thing that annoys me a little. They, should, they shouldn't have ladies' tees. The tees should just be, if you want to play it at 7,200, if you want to play the course at 5,600, and then you just go to a set of tees that suits your ability. So, um, you know, it, I don't think the tees should be defined as men's and ladies. It just should be the length of the golf course, and then the, the player uh, decides what challenge they want to take on that day. <laughs> how, how is the ladies' game of golf changed? Have you got ladies out there right now hitting it a long way off the tee? Or is it, is, is it still all around the, the short game in the putting? No, I mean, ladies golf um, has evolved just like the men's game. Um, you know, the, the better equipment, uh, better fitting, better swings, better coaching. Uh, people are stronger, people are fitter. So uh, just like the men's game, the ladies are, it's definitely becoming more a, more a power game. Uh, you know, people are hitting it further, the players are stronger. So um, in that respect, it's just, it is very light. It's just developing like the men's game is. And, and again, this, this is going to be a question for both of you, but I'll start with you, Katrina. What, what drew, drew you to golf? What was it that, because that, we, we've got a golfing kind of podcast that we do, and it's always about how you got grabbed by the game of golf. Mm. What was it that got you and what, at what age was that? Um, I probably started playing when I was about six or seven. Uh, the little town I grew up in, uh, you know, my mum and dad got me into golf. My two older brothers, um, town I grew up in, there's, fortunate enough, there's a little uh, children's par three course. So, uh, you know, in the summers, we'd go along and play there. They had little competitions, under 10s, under 12s. So um, I kind of just got into it that way as a summer sport. And then, um, obviously, as you start winning a few little things, you start moving further afield and... Um, like anyone, if, you, if you're good at something and you, you win things, uh, you want to keep going. <laughs> it, and we're going to come on to that in a minute, what you've won and what you've been a part of. But Michael, same with you. What was it that you said that you, you realised that you weren't quite at the, the cutting edge, which is a very fine line, by the way, but you weren't at that where you could potentially make money out of it. What age was that and when did you start? Um, I started playing when I was about nine or ten, I think. And my... 
no one in my family played golf and it was by chance one day I came home from school and my dad had offloaded a set of golf clubs into the garage that he was storing for someone. So I thought this looks fun, went down to the local building site and that was our own golf course um, for, for quite a while until we got thrown off. And it wasn't until I went to watch a local football game and I saw the corner flags in, I thought, oh, there's a golf course. And I started playing corner to corner around the local football pitch. Um, and to this day, my mum still stays in the village and there's a big sign on the, in the village green now, no golf. And that sign was my fault because I shanked a golf ball through the shop window one day and we got thrown off, thrown off. And I didn't even live near a golf course. The nearest golf course was about five miles away. So full credit to my parents. They still liked golf, so they just ferried me back and forth. And um, so uh, I started playing that way. Loved golf. Um, uh, loads of kids in Scotland at the time played golf and uh, really got into it. And it was funny, a couple of years ago, um, my dad, he sadly passed away a couple of years ago. But he said, uh, there was a local community newsletter and he said, why don't you write an article and tell people about your journey in golf? Uh, you've ended up in Qatar and you've been all around the world uh, uh, working in golf clubs um, and such like. And funnily enough, um, the story starts on a corner football pitch in, in the village in Scotland. And the story will end one day when I'm going to hop over the road here and play corner to corner in the Education City football stadium. I'm going to chip some golf balls around the pitch there uh, as soon as they let me in so I, can, I, I complete the full circle. So, um that, that would be for me, just playing, a, chipping a golf ball around a football park. That's what I like doing. That's, that's incredible because that's, that's a, a magnificent stadium too, right? So that, there's going to be a great photo opportunity there. Yeah, yeah. And, and when, I, when I realized I turned pro and I, I'm still a member of the PGA and I still love golf and still play, but um, I, I recognized um, when you're growing up and you, you can win your junior club championship and then you can win your county championships and then you go to national level and you're not quite winning and then you start to see golf a little bit an international level you just drop further and further down so I recognized pretty quickly there were so many kids out there beating me and they were only a handful of people they were the people in Scotland so what was it going to go like um, when you're going international so um, best to find another way of earning a living and uh, but still loving it and still involved with the game. I, 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 the story is incredible, and, and I hear this from so many different people that, that of, they get to a stage in their life and they don't they realise that they're not going to be somebody that's going to be a, a big a big star, um, but they still want to stay in sports or they suffer an industry. They have such a burning desire to stay in a, in the sport and industry. It's just the burning, and yours is a perfect example of that, Michael. Yeah, and we're lucky. I think golf's uh, an amazing sport. Um, I think the PGA lists out all the different jobs that their members actually do. Uh, writers, commentators, golf course designers. Some will get into uh, other sides of it. You can get into retailing, club fitting and such like. So there's, there's a lot of opportunities uh, to uh, remain in the sport but not be playing at the highest level. Some other sports aren't quite like that. Maybe you can be a, a top athlete and maybe a coach but not much else. So we are lucky that golf has a, a very wide breadth of career opportunities available to us. Yeah, it's, it's, it is a, a magnificent sport. And I've got to say, I, I love it. It's, it's probably my first sport. I don't play enough of it, but, um, but it's, it's a wonderful. And once it gets you, it's in, in, from a social side, from a fitness side, from a, a game of life perspective, it's just incredible. And that takes me on to a question for you, Katrina. Is, is it... When did you realize that you had that ability to go further into competition side of things? When did you realize that and, and how did you feel about that? Was it something that you embraced or was it quite scary and intimidating? Uh, it was probably, I suppose, about 16, 17. Uh, you know, I'd started going further afield, uh, playing county things and then international things and, uh, you know, won the Scottish girls and then progressed, you know, went into the Scottish ladies and, you know, won that a few times. So um, then I went to university and it was probably about my second year at university. Um, I think I won the Scottish, I won the British, I won turn in Japan in, the, in that year um, in the US and in Europe. So I, I kind of decided... Once I'd finished university, I always wanted to kind of have something just to fall back on in case I didn't make it because, uh, you know, as you know, so few do make it right to the top. So um, it was probably then I realized I wanted to give it a go. I think you're always, I was always wanting to push myself and play against the best players in the world. And it just seemed that natural progression to turn pro and uh, 
you know, see how your game was against the best players in the world. So, uh, you know, I was very fortunate. I went to Q school out in the States and got through the first time and then uh, it's just gone from there. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think obviously you're very competitive. That just comes just naturally to me, competitive, everything I do. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that was kind of how I got into the game. Always, always just wanting to push myself and play against better players and, and see if I could match them. I, you seem you don't seem like you've got a competitive edge in you sitting here talking on the on on our phones. Um, oh no, very competitive. <laughs> don't, my, don't let my kids win anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. And just touching on this, you say you went and travelled all over the world. Is this life glamorous? Is it as glamorous as it seems, or does it get kind of what's it like going on tour? I mean, it's not as glamorous, but, um, you know, I've loved it. Um, you know, I was fortunate. My husband carried for me most of my career. So, uh, you know, we traveled together. And then, uh, you know, when we had kids, they, they traveled with us until they started school. So, um, I mean, it, is, it isn't as glamorous. It's not as you see a golf course, you see a hotel, and the time you've kind of worked out, and there's not much downtime. But, um, you know, I wouldn't have changed it for anything. Um, but it's a strange way of life, but, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. Did you play in tournaments or did you do teaching as well? I, I think I would be the world's worst teacher. <laughs> I can figure that's out really... what I'm doing wrong, but I don't know if I'd know what anyone else was doing wrong. <laughs> oh, that's such a, and that is such a great point to bring up right now. It is a, such a great point because... They're both different, are... different arts, really. I mean, the great teachers, um, you know, it's a completely different skill set. Yeah, I was a windsurfer. I know, I know this sounds a little bit far, uh, hard to, to um, imagine, <laughs> but I used to be a windsurfer and a good one. Um, but I, I was fantastic at windsurfing, if I may say so myself, but I couldn't teach for toffee. I couldn't yeah. teach anything. Mm -hmm. It was I didn't have the patience. And that's one thing that you've got to, you've got to do. So, again, it takes me on to the next question for, for, for you. Um, is So, how? You won the Open. Okay, and that must have been magnificent in itself. But then to go on and captain a team, what was it like? Who was the first person that came up to you and said, do you think you can captain the European team for the Solheim Cup? What? Um, you know, I think it was one of these just kind of evolved. Um, you know, I had played in it nine times, so um, it was kind of natural. They were, you, you, once you've played in it a few times, you know, you kind of think, well, will you, do you want to be captain? Starts kind of creepy, I suppose, into the back of your mind. And then... Um, you know, once I knew Scotland were putting in a bid and, you know, it was just kind of coming to the right time in my career. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I kind of put my name out that I would be interested in doing it and uh, was delighted when, you know, I was asked. So, uh, you know, I think, I mean, someone like Laura Davis has said she doesn't want to be captain. So, I mean, I think um, it's just like one of these things. If you've played in probably anything, six, seven, eight, whatever Solheims, you're probably going to get that opportunity to captain at some point if you wish to do it. If there is royalty in golf, you're definitely in there, without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt. And, and you must have got such an experience. Why not go out on a high? You won. You were the winning captain. Why are you going to put yourself through it all again? Yeah, maybe I'm mad. But, uh, you know, I think there's, there's such a difference between a, a home game and an away game. Um, obviously, being the home game and in Scotland, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a lot of work, but I really enjoyed it. But the away tie next year in uh, Ohio will be completely different you really just focus on the team you don't have as much of the uh, the kind of media commitments before it uh, running up to it so um, be quite different no captains ever won home and away so uh, that's another little challenge yeah that must be a challenge and the, there's one thing that I, I like to do and I like to kind of I'm listening to you but I'm also seeing the videos in in my mind of you walking down when when all of a sudden you've got the, the opportunity to win what is it like to start with? What is it like to all of a sudden be the captain of all those golfing stars? How difficult is that? How, how do you have to, um, you're telling us our, our secrets now, your secrets now, but if you can't tell us, but how do you, um, how do you do it? Is, it? is it everybody's individual and you've got to deal with them on an individual basis or how do you bring them together all as a team? You know, it's a little strange because the, the two years before I'd I played in the team so I suddenly go from two years in 17 playing in it to then 19 and being the captain but um, in that respect it in a way made it easier because I still knew all the players uh, you know I've been playing with them all so uh, yeah, I think it's just one of these things you know I spoke to a lot of past Ryder Cup Solheim Cup captains to get a bit of advice and and obviously you pick up things in in the ones I the ones I had played in you pick up things from other captains or 
how perhaps you you might have liked to do things. So I, I think it's just you pick up these things and then at the end of the day, you've still just got to be yourself. You've got to go and do it. I had some great vice captains. Uh, you know, it's not just me. Uh, I've got a lot of help there. So, but uh, yeah, I think it's just getting the, the right people around you and uh, just letting the, the players go out and play. I, 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 as I said at the beginning of the podcast, I'm, I'm still nervous now. I, I still got butterflies, right? Because again, I'm still trying to put myself into your position and I'm thinking to myself, I'm, I'm trying to envisage, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I've, we've won, I've won. Let me just, but you're going to put, that must have been, it must have been nerve wracking when you were so close in the last um, Solheim Cup. To put yourself anywhere close to that game is unbelievable. Do you know, I actually, I must say, I really enjoyed being captain. It was completely different from playing. I mean, you don't get the nerve. When you're playing, obviously, you're at the, the top of your game and that's where you want to be, but you are nervous. So there's no, there's, that's the most nervous you can be, I think, playing in a, in a team competition because you've got, you, instead of just normally in golf, if you played badly, you let yourself down. But, uh, you know, when it's a team thing, you obviously let down your, the rest of the team and your captain and that. So um, I must say, I actually really enjoy being there I had no pressure really being captain I didn't need to hit any shots I could stand and kind of enjoy watching and different things didn't know it knowing I didn't have to go out there and actually perform and hit the shots so uh, uh, I must say I uh, probably enjoyed it more and was less nervous than I thought I would be to be honest oh congratulations honestly congratulations and good luck for next year thanks um, very much it, it, we are, um, I, I'm going to be cheering you on personally. hopefully it'll be as exciting yeah yeah of course I can I, I just can't wait now, I'm, I'm going to kind of also, w one of the questions that I was going to ask you was, was um, you know, you brought, I, I was reading a game and it was record amounts of people that got involved in the Ryder, uh, not the Ryder Cup, the Solheim Cup, sorry, last year. Viewing figures on TV was up, um, more people were, it, was it the, the, um, the um, course? It must have been a magnificent feeling to see how well you've done to come that far. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a huge success for, for women's golf worldwide in general. I mean, I think it is, it's, it's, it's the biggest event in women's golf, the Solheim Cup. Um, and I think it just, I mean, it was, obviously it was fantastic that Europe won, but I think the whole event, just the way it all transpired coming down, you know, to the, to the last game, the last putt, it, you know, it really couldn't have been any more exciting. And the per that Suzanne, who held the last putt, was perhaps a slightly controversial pick. So, I mean, if someone had written it, you would never, you'd have just said, oh, what ridiculous, that could never happen. Uh, so I think, to be honest, it, the women's golf was the biggest winner out of the whole thing. Um, like you say, it got huge viewing figures all around the world. So, um, and for it to be that exciting and that close um, is just great. And hopefully get more people out, women playing golf and more people watching women's golf. And that brings me on to my next one. We're coming back to the virtual golf, um, the women's <laughs> golf global kind of um, golf day, um, mm. which is happening today. Um, that, that's a magnificent achievement. And, and it's, it's a great thing that people are trying to do, especially in this, this current situation that we face ourselves. It's looking at the positives. It's, it's kind of trying to get more ladies involved. Um, Michael, with, with your side of things, I know it's important, and I know it's important to get Qatari ladies involved in it as well. How are you doing things to try to encourage those type of things? And what are the things that you're trying to entice people into your golf club that has never, ever experienced golf before? Yeah, we've, we've done a lot of work with, with schools, which is great. So start, start them young, get the kids involved, and, and get the girls involved, uh, wanting to come along and play. Um, we have very um, relaxed surroundings here. There's, there's nothing. Golf has a bit of history of having strict rules and codes and what you have to dress and wear, et cetera, et cetera. We don't have any of those here. So really just trying to get people to come down to the club and enjoy the surroundings. So one of our bigger things to get uh, ladies playing is, is going through the corporate world and corporate team building. So bringing organizations to the club um, for a team building. So that's... Um, not play, it's, uh, it's something serious for business, but we've intertwined uh, golfing activities within the team building activities and it, it's, it's great fun. So we've had some large organizations here bringing their whole teams down, 100 plus people, and they have a day of team building and um, by the end of the day, they've tried golf and, and then they can go away. And you're always gonna find that um, um, a good number of them are gonna, it's gonna resonate with them and say, you know, I really enjoyed it. That's a new sport and that's something for, for me to come and try or for me to come and try with my family and such like and 
Again, you've seen the practice facilities we have here. I, I keep saying to people, I don't really care if you play a full round of golf ever in your life, but even if you just come along and have a game of putting or hit a basketball on the driving range with your friends and, and, and shoot at some targets, that's a great start. So there's a big opportunity. So our, our first and foremost uh, ways of getting people into golf are obviously through the schools, the universities here on our campus. We have nine universities. And then the other one is corporate team building. And everyone's then getting a taste of golf. And generally what's going to happen is they might just say, well, that's my thing. I love it. I can do it. I, I, I want to learn more. You know what golf's like. You hit one really nice shot and the feel and the sound of the ball clicking against the club face, it's addictive. So uh, we've got to give people the opportunity to try that. If you've never tried golf before, you'll never uh, know what it's really like to play. And then um, it goes without saying in Qatar, we live in a desert. So when you're surrounded by greenery and trees and such like, it's a real treat for people to come to the golf course anyway. So we've got a lot of great ingredients, I think, to help people um, on their journey into the game of golf. And I think for the ladies, especially with your, your facilities, you've got a, a section where ladies have got their own area where they can go in and, and they've, got, they've got the short game practice, they've got bunkers, they've got the... Your facility, you live in Qatar and you, you've thought about going to play golf. This is the time you do it. It's, it's like it's friendly. They look after you. They show you around. It is incredible. And, and again, the ladies have got a private area where they can go in and, and practice as long as they want to. Yeah, that, that's just sitting in with the culture here. And uh, I think what we, we aim to do here is never have the word no ever said. You know, everything is possible. So um, often people put up their own barriers and say, oh, I can't play because I'm having to wear an abai or something like that. And say, well, you don't have to wear an abai when you come and play golf here at Education City. We have a lady coach. You can go into a ladies' private area and so on and so forth. So the, the more barriers we can take away in people's own minds, I mean, very often people will stop themselves doing something, uh, the better. So... Um, yeah, we, we've got all, the, all, all geared up. We can do ladies only nights at the Centre of Excellence. We can do a whole host of uh, events and, and, and things. We've got huge space here, so um, opportunities are endless, really. I, I think one of the things that you said at the beginning was your team. You've got an amazing team. I've seen um, uh, Rachel, for one, she came on one of the shows with us. Um, which was um, absolutely incredible. Our viewing figures, we had um, record viewing figures that week, so it was really, really good. And also Yasmin. Yasmin, I've seen what she's done. She's a Qatari golfer, and she goes round to the schools, and I've seen the videos of, of going round to the schools to teach them how to, how to play golf too, which is incredible. Which is, it's, it's just what you need right now, especially with your facilities. Yeah, I think Yasmin's great because she shows it can be done. She's Qatari. She's fallen in love with golf. She's, she plays to a high standard. She, she, she loves the game and, and rightly say she goes into schools and they run up to the commercial bank, Qatar Masters. She did a, a number of visits to schools and I've seen her up on the stage and she, she's, she's great fun. She gets the kids really in, engaged with the game. So, um, and, and then they can look at her and say, well, she's Qatari, she's like me. I'm going to follow in her footsteps. So um, it's just a shame I haven't got enough uh, of Yasmin's yet. But... Um, that's our intent here and, and, and days like today are all about promoting why people should play golf, the health benefits, the social benefits and such like. So um, it's all going in the right direction. Katrina, have, have you got any kind of um, any tips for Michael in how to bring more, how to encourage more ladies coming to start golf for you? I think he sounds like he's got everything covered. I mean, as I say, I was, I was fortunate enough to be down at the facility and, you know, I've, it, really is one of the best I've ever seen in all my travels around the world. Um, as he was saying, for the culture there, they've got the ladies' own, only section, uh, you know, just the, the short game facilities, the putting greens. And then I love the idea of the par three course and then a six hole course, you know, just to get people in. Because sometimes, you know, if you're a beginner, it can be pretty daunting to suddenly go out there and try and play an 18 hole golf course. So, um, you know, it's as if it just progresses you from, you know, a driving range and practicing onto a par three course then to six holes. Uh, so they really have, they really have thought of everything. But they have thought of everything. And I, I was going to put you both under pressure to look up and say, and I know that your answer, David, what it's going to have to be, but is it, is it one of the best in the world, would you say, on a global basis, your facilities? <coughs> yeah, but, well, yes, um, I, I've traveled a bit as well, not as much as uh, Katrina, but um, to have all that uh, technology uh, uh, for, for golf development under one roof is, is, is very unique. Um, 
but technology is only the one part of it. You need good coaches and you need innovative coaches. And you need to make it fun as well. So um, what we've got is we talk about accelerated learning. I think in a facility like that, you can pick up golf and learn it quicker because you're seeing or you're feeling uh, the moves that the, the instructors are trying to give you much quicker than maybe in a, a, a more traditional manner. So that helps the, the process. Um, so, yeah, it's a very advanced facility, but we've got to get people through it. We've got to get uh, people trying golf and then we've got to pe get people sticking with golf. And that's the big thing. All over the world, um, I think every country's got a great number of junior initiatives and initiatives to get people to try golf. The next stage is to get people sticking at golf. And that, that's our, our big challenge, not just here in Qatar, but everywhere in the world is how do we get people turning them into real regular players? Yeah. Yeah, and that's the, because once you get people in and once you get them through the social side of it and then kind of, as you said, hitting that ball for the first time and it sounds right, it just goes right down the middle and then you've got the social side aspect to it, you're playing with friends. It's like, it's one of those games, I keep on saying it's a game of life because you never get it cracked. You're never, you never, you never get to a stage where you, it's easy. It's never easy because you're always pushing yourself to the next level and that's what I love about golf. And your facilities from my side, and it, it has nothing to do with me. I'm just a host today, but it's, it's, it's on a global level. It's, it's the best I've ever seen. But um, Katrina, from your side, would you agree? I know that you've virtually said that already, but would you agree? Yeah, certainly one of the best I've seen. Um, I think they've, they've obviously benefited from Michael traveling around and looking at other places. And, you know, I think you always pick up everywhere, probably would do something slightly different if they could do it again. So I think obviously you'd learn from how other, you know, clubs have done things and then they've taken all that together and put it into their facility, which, um, like I say, is, is first, first class. And, and I've got to say at this stage, and I, I, I do want to give um, credit, especially because I, th I thought when I first saw the golf club going to be there, I thought that, that um, maybe, maybe the Education City was um, looking at it from a commercial um, aspect of things. Um, and, whoa, boy, was I so wrong. It's like, this is just going to probably produce, it could produce some of the best golfers in the world without a shadow of a doubt. And it's, it's like it's all through an education process. That's what it's there for. And I was so naive to think any different because it's, it's all there. And when you see the level of service and you see the level of staff and the, the level of people there, it's, it's fantastic. And I, I t again, I, take my, I, I give you the best commendations ever, Michael. And I know it's you and your team, and I know it's Shaker Moza, and I know it's everybody else. It's incredible what you've achieved there. Unbelievable. It really is. It's like, and so if, if I, what kind of message, Katrina, would you give to anybody that's thinking about taking up golf from a lady's perspective? Um, what should they be doing for, what, what should they be doing? What should they be looking for? Um, what are the benefits that you felt in your life that it's, it's appealed to you? Um, any I mean, I would say... Kind of any first time, first time golfer, I think, you know, just find a facility close to you, whether it's a driving range, a golf course, um, perhaps get a couple of lessons to start with just so you can get the basics and then just go away and, you know, hit away, play away. You know, you'll, you'll make friends. It's amazing. Um, you know, that was the one thing growing up. There weren't in my little town a huge amount of girls that played. But as you start going further and further afield, you'd, you'd see all the other kind of girls and women who do play golf. So I think once you get into the environment, you will, even if you're on your own and not with a friend, you will find um, there are a lot more women who play golf than you perhaps think. Uh, and I think it's, it's really just enjoying it, isn't it? You've just got to get out there. You've got to enjoy it. Um, I think the, the one thing I think about golf is that you can you can play with anyone. There's not many sports where you can play, different abilities can play together. Um, you know, we're just hopefully coming out of this lockdown and be able to play golf. I might go out and play nine holes with my daughter or with my mum. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter what standard someone's at, you, you can play together. Uh, most sports, you have to play with someone of a similar standard. Um, and golf, again, is a sport you can play for life. I mean, you can play it from five years to 85 years. So um, I think those are the, the main beauties. And obviously, you're outside, fresh air, um, you know, getting exercise. So it really, it ticks a lot of boxes. Could you have seen any other career 
that you would have possibly liked to have done apart from golf? I know the answer. <laughs> Perhaps not that I'd have liked to have done. I did study accounting at university, but uh, I think I'm glad I made it at golf. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen all the pictures that you went through. I'll tell you that, please, I, I, I would have been holding my head really badly if you would have chose golf, <laughs> uh, chose accounting, sorry. Mm. You've done amazing, amazing in your, your time in the golf. And, and congratulations on the Soheim Cup. I so much look forward to the um, 2021 um, because that again that's going to be an incredible thing for you and you must learn so much um, Michael thank you so much for coming on the show thank you for telling us all about Education um, Golf Club I love the place I think it's wonderful I hope that um, you ladies have a wonderful um, golf day um, uh, to celebrate it's a wonderful achievement um, thanks very much for coming on the show Everybody, thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sorry I didn't get to ask. I think it was most important that we want to try and encourage ladies taking up golf. It doesn't matter what age. It's like the youngsters, it's like to the grown-ups. It's like just pick up a club and hit that first ball and you'll be hooked. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for spending time Thanks with very me. much. Thanks for having me, Steve. Thank you so thanks, much. Steve. Thank you. Thank thanks. you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody.